from Lily Thomas, owner of Little Olive Clothing Company, and today I'm gonna show you my trick for getting the perfect hem on your curved hem tees every time. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have here a curved hem tee. It's a Lowland Kids pattern. I have added a length on it so that it is uh, like a shift dress length, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna focus on the curved hem of the tee. You can see that it is um, a little bit longer in the back, but it's curved in both the front and the back. So I like to start and see how it kind of, when you pull it, it curls away. So I like to sew it so that it's curling down towards the switch plate, not curling, if I'm sewing it this way, it curls up towards my uh, needle and I want it to curl down so that it helps it lay flatter. All right, so I'm going to stitch a basting stitch, so length four, straight stitch. Um, you can leave your tension at just regular, and we're gonna stitch all the way around the bottom edge at five eighths of a stitch, or five, excuse me, five eighths of an inch, all the way around the bottom. I don't know if you can tell here, but my thread is a bluish color. I, it doesn't really matter, but I do like to do like a, a brighter color just to kind of help um, me see it when I'm, when I'm folding it over and pulling it out later. So we're gonna do a 5 eighths of an inch, just a basting stitch all the way around the bottom. That's gonna be our guideline. All right, so now you can see that we've got our guide stitch all the way around. You can trim those extra guys. I should probably cut those off um, just so they don't get in the way. There's no real reason. They're not gonna do any harm unless they get jam up your machine. Um, so now what we're gonna do is I like to use a twin needle if you have a cover stitch or any kind of way that you wanna hem it. It doesn't really matter. You could also um, go ahead and serge the end and then fold up and just do a single straight stitch if you want to. But the point is that when we fold it, we're gonna fold as we go and we're gonna use that basting stitch as a guideline to make sure we're folding it up um, the right amount and evenly all the way across the bottom and the front. So I like to start at one of the side seams and I'll pop that on the machine and show you guys. All right, now we got my double needle on there with white thread because that's what I want to hem this with. And we are going to start at the side seam um, with the front of the shirt on, sorry, with the front of the shirt on top and the back of the shirt on bottom. And that's because I want to start right here on this side seam and when I finish, I wanna overlap and I want the two inches of overlap to be on the back side of the shirt. So make sure that the back of the shirt is um, where I start, if that makes sense. So here's the side seam and then we're gonna start going, heading towards the back of the shirt. Okay. I did the basting stitch around at 5 eighths, so we're gonna hem it at 4 eighths. That's gonna give us a little bit extra, so we make sure we catch our stitching on the, uh, on the hem. So I'm gonna kind of pull and stretch. Sorry, let's see if I can get the light better here. Pull and stretch. You wanna really stretch to make sure that it's nice and smooth. You don't want any tucks. As you go, you can iron this later um, so make sure you're pulling and stretching and folding as you go and just do a few inches at a time. And pause and kind of re, make sure you fold. It kind of helps, I've found, to hold it upwards at a curve. Um, that's going to help it stay nice and smooth. This is something that the more you do, the more you'll get a feel for it. So don't be afraid to do a few practice runs. Um, I have a hard time using fabric I don't love, even for my practice runs, but if you don't want to waste your expensive fabric, choose some, uh, some Walmart special or something. Um, okay, we're going to keep going. When you get to here, the other side seam, it's always tricky because that's where it really does not want to lay nice and flat. Let's see if you can see how it kind of starts to pull. So you really wanna make sure you're putting your fingers here and keeping it nice and smooth as you feed it through the machine. And match it up as best you can. Oh, I did not trim my little whiskers, did I? And I even made a point of saying to do that earlier. Okay. So pulling 
nice. This is where you're gonna have to stretch the most, like at the before and after the side seams. But once you get past that, it is pretty smooth sailing. You're just gonna continue making sure you fold at the right spot. And keep going around. Fold at the basting stitch. Okay, now that we're getting close to the other edge, I'm gonna pause and tie, pull the other two threads back to the back and tie a knot with all three threads here. So there's pulling one back. Let's see if I can do this from sitting so far back. There we go, all three back here. And I just do a little square knot. Um, this one, you're gonna overlap. It's the second stitch or the second knot that you make that's not getting overlapped. So, all right, once I do three good knots in that, trim it, and then that's gonna get covered up. So the chances of that coming undone are very minimal. Okay, we're gonna continue folding, pulling, and gently moving it through our machine. You don't ever wanna force it through your machine. So you're pulling the fabric, but you're still letting the machine do all the um, moving. Okay, we're almost to the... Okay, now we're back to where we started, if you can see. Sorry, my lighting is not great right now. And we're gonna overlap it about two inches. Okay, lift our needle, pull it out, and then do another knot to secure it. Let's pull our threads to the back. And then I'll show you over at the um, iron, we're gonna do nice uh, steamy press and that will really help it um, look nice and professional. All right, finish up our knots, trim those. I don't like to cut them too close to the knot. That's gonna go right about there. Okay, let's go iron it. So you can see how with all that stretching and pulling, it really did make it quite wobbly here but that is what i'm telling you about with our steam i've got my iron nice and hot and i'm going to kind of stretch as i go and kind of let it shrink back but i don't want to iron any wrinkles into it so you kind of want to just stretch it enough to make sure you're not ironing any wrinkles let's flip that around so i can get the other side better Okay, now I haven't removed the basting stitch yet, but you can already see how beautiful and smooth and so nice and even. Okay, so that's the basics of hemming a curved hem tee and using a little basting stitch as your guide. That's gonna be a lot faster than trying to, you know, consistently measure and use like a marking pen or some other some other technique just doing a quick basting stitch is going to be really fast and give you a nice even measurement all the way around and there is our perfect even curved hem t-shirt okay let me know what other uh hacks or patterns you guys want to see in the comments and i would love it if you would like and subscribe thanks so much